Butterfly Blue Devils. I wanted to take a minute and just talk with you. Uh, sometimes it's hard to uh, convey uh, an issue just in writing. And as much as I don't like videoing myself, I did want to uh, speak with you a few minutes about what we're going through and uh, what we're facing as we transition into the new school year. Um, and I want to emphasize that right off the bat that you know, what we've done and what we've put together has been worked on for weeks. We initially shared our plans for starting back school on June 10th. And at that particular time, um, we were in a different situation. Uh, we believe with the number of cases of COVID and since that time, as I'm sure most everyone is aware, um, the number of identified cases has definitely gone up in our community. And so it did uh, prompt us to uh, step back, talk some more, deliberate, and, and honestly pray over what we're going to do to prepare for an August 5th in-person start to school. And we are still moving towards an August 5th in-person start to the school year. And we are sharing today uh, our plans for returning to school. And again, it is uh, a document that we have collectively worked on. Uh, we have reviewed information from the Georgia Department of Public Health. Uh, local physicians have contributed. Uh, the Georgia Department of Education has provided guidance. And we've had a lot of discussions among our board and our leadership. And, and even among our group, there's not complete uh, agreement, but um, because we um, do value uh, working together and coming to a solution, we were able to talk through things and get to consensus on what we are proposing to start uh, August 5th and implement. Um, I wanna make sure that um, I emphasize that uh, anything in this plan was not put together from any kind of political standpoint. It was not put together to try to take a political stand. And, and I respectfully ask our parents to, to please, let's all step back from the political rhetoric and the political divide that's um, really dividing our country in many ways right now. And let's really try to focus on, you know, Bremen and Bremen kids and not get caught up in, in everything that's being shared from a political standpoint. And, and honestly, my own position of how I felt about some of the things in the plan has changed um, over the last few days. Um, because again, there is no easy answer. Um, and that's not to say the plan that we've put in place is, is, is the absolute perfect plan or the right plan. It's the plan that we feel is the safest approach to start back school. Uh, in the last few days, a lot of schools, mostly bigger schools in the metro area, but some closer to home, have decided to start the school year virtual. And we just, and, and that is, we respect their decision. But for Bremen, for our small system, and thinking about our kids, we just feel strongly, very strongly, that kids need to be back in school. Uh, we need them to be back with us. Um, as adults, we need those relationships. Our teachers need those relationships. And we certainly believe our kids need those relationships. Um, we have parents that have to work. And we know that um, starting virtually puts a hardship on them. And we do feel like as, as hard as we work, we do lose something instructionally. Um, but more than that, for the, the mental and physical well-being of our students, we feel like we need to be back in person. And so that is still our goal and we're aiming that way. And you know, we hope that doesn't change between now and August 5th. Um, we are implementing things that will uh, be uncomfortable, that will be things that not everybody agrees with. But at the end of the day, we feel like it is important that um, we implement these things that allows us to hopefully start August 5th and stay in school and not have to cancel school and go back digital or remote learning like we did in the spring. And we were recently, uh, or I was recently reminded, uh, I've been here 10 years and I've often used the term air on the side of caution. And, you know, when we're talking about students, um, I, I think that's a good reminder 
that uh, we've always taken that stance to the best of our ability. And this is no different, you know, regardless of political feelings, um, what is the thing to do um, that is erring on the side of caution, not just for our kids, but for our parents whom our kids go home to, for our grandparents who are raising some of our kids, what is the safest thing to do? What is the thing to do to err on the side of caution? So we are taking a more um, restrictive approach, if you wanna use that terminology, to begin the year. And it's, it is to begin the year. Um, we hope that if we do it this way, that we can, we can lessen some of those restrictions as the school year progresses in short order. We would love to see it change in, in two weeks, four weeks, but we just don't know. It, it just depends on the pandemic, the progression of identified cases, um, in our community and in our surrounding communities from which we have students come. Um, all of those things have to be evaluated. So specific, specific to that, um, you'll see a lot of things in the plan that looks very different than what we normally would have in a normal school year, but this isn't a normal school year. Um, part of that is face coverings, and I know that is a very divisive topic, um, and we have debated it extensively. Uh, we have a have spent a lot of time coming to consensus. And again, in the vein of trying to err on the side of caution, trying to uh, stay in school and not have to cancel school due to an outbreak or a, or a lot of identified cases in our school, we are gonna begin the year with the expectation that face coverings will be worn uh, by students at the academy, middle school and high school when students are within six feet of anyone else um, and inside. Uh, at Jones Elementary, we're strongly encouraging that students do that, but we fully recognize the, the age and the challenge of the age and, and how that would look. But we do strongly encourage that if they can tolerate it, um, we would love for that to happen too. Um, our staff is, uh, the expectation is that our staff at all of our campuses uh, we'll wear face coverings again when they are within six feet, but you know, when they go beyond six feet, for example, when they're teaching so that kids can hear them, uh, we're gonna encourage them to get beyond six feet so that they can lower the, the face covering. Um, and so it's, um, there's also gonna be a lot of um, things that will mitigate students having to keep them on all day long without a break, uh, personally. Um, I've, I'm trying to train myself and, and just being completely transparent, um, it's difficult and it's, it's not comfortable. Um, but uh, when we weigh that out with the potential harm that it could do to uh, not only possibly the student, even though a lot are asymptomatic, but the harm that it could do to their parents and their grandparents, uh, we would rather start the year uh, with being more restrictive instead of less restrictive. And again, if we can uh, lessen that, hopefully when the cases start to, number of identified cases start to go down. Um, we know again, it's a highly controversial topic and, and we, we hate that. Uh, we hope that you will trust us, that when kids are miserable, if they're struggling, we will work with kids uh, when they need breaks from it. Um, we certainly will allow them to do that. Our staff are gonna struggle with it too. Um, it's not ideal, it's not ideal. But when we weigh out discomfort with the possibility that it could um, exponentially spread the disease to our parents, grandparents, and among our kids, then we have to choose the discomfort over the possible consequences of life and death. And, and I hope you understand that. Um, and again, it's not a political stance. We're just trying to do what we can uh, to get back to normal to get back to having activities for our kids. And we still mourn over uh, the loss of activities, the loss of a normal graduation for our uh, spring activities. Um, and we're just trying not to get back into that, that situation. Uh, one of the other major things, and it's not the only thing, but it is one I wanna mention, is the uh, temperature checks. We are asking or requiring that all staff and students um, are, uh, when they get to school, they will be uh, touchless temperature checks. It should be quick, um, but we just wanna make sure that no one's coming with a fever. And um, this particular year, um, we are definitely emphasizing if you are sick, stay home. 
We are waiving perfect attendance. Um, and again, we're emphasizing staff and students err on the side of staying home when you are sick. Um, under these considerations, parents are given the option to choose remote learning. And you will see a link in the documents that we've provided and we ask that you please uh, let us know if you plan to do that. You don't have to respond if you don't plan to do that, but if you do plan to utilize remote learning after learning of our plans to start back school um, so that we can ad adequately plan, we need to know that by Monday, this Monday, by 4 p.m., there will be a link in the return to school documents where you'll see that. And so again, we please ask that you let us know, but also know that when you select that option, you're selecting that option for a semester and you're waiving participation in extracurricular because we have to be able to manage the number of students that we have. We have to be able to manage schedules. And so we cannot allow the in and out constantly. So once you select that option, uh, please understand that uh, to be able to have a schedule that we can stick to, um, we have to ask that you stick to that, being home or remote learning for a semester. Um, and, and again, I just want to emphasize that um, we're gonna do everything in our power to not start the school year remotely for everyone like we finished the year. Um, but to do that, we have to do some things that are uncomfortable. We have to do some things that are not popular and um, we fully respect that people have different opinions, but at the end of the day, we have to be responsible for doing the thing that, that we believe is the safest thing at this point um, for our students. And so um, please go along with us. Um, I, you're always welcome um, and encouraged to contact me. Um, at the end of the day, um, it, it primarily is my recommendation um, and decision to do that. So I am the one to contact with those concerns. So um, if you want to call, uh, come by um, and meet, or if you wanna email me, um, please do that. Um, and um, I'm welcome to hear that feedback. And again, the plan that we're implementing is a more restrictive plan to begin the year with the hope that we will not have to uh, stick to it uh, for, for more than four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, we'll see. Um, but it's certainly not the plan for the whole year at this point. Um, thank you for trusting us. Thank you for sending your kids to us. And um, again, working together, I know Bremen of all places, Bremen City Schools can get through this. Thank you.